Good morning. Good morning. Welcome on this All Saints Sunday. It is my hope that this service will be a blessing for all of us who are gathered here today, and again for those who are worshiping with us on Zoom. Um, please note that if you have any prayer requests this morning, if you're watching on Zoom, you can type that into the chat, or not Zoom, but on Facebook Live. Uh, you can type that into the chat, and that will be brought up to me before the time of prayers. Um, if, does anybody here have any additions to the prayer list? I do have two. Chelsea Johnson, who is Ben Keel's fiance, was taken to the hospital yesterday, and they're not sure what's going on, so please pray for Chelsea. Also, my niece, Ashley, who works at the hospital and has been working on a COVID floor, was diagnosed with COVID yesterday and is hospitalized. So please keep her in your prayers as well. Are there any other additions? Uh, two other announcements. Um, worship and music met yesterday, and we were trying to figure out what to do about Christmas Eve. And we have a really smart organist who said, why don't you take a survey in church tomorrow? So this little red piece of paper, red for Christmas, uh, if you could just kind of fill out, if you are likely to attend a Christmas Eve service, please mark one of these times. If a time that's not on here um, isn't listed here, you know, let us know um, so that worship and music can start planning uh, Christmas Eve worship. The other thing that was handed out this morning in your bulletin was this half sheet of paper. Uh, talking about a giving project. Now this was brought to me by Drew Morris. And he said, Pastor, is this something we can do as the church? And I was gonna ask him to kinda talk to you about it and, and he's not here, so. Um, they're collecting these for residents of the nursing homes to make sure that they have a nice Christmas as well. And I do have something um, planned also for some of our shut-ins and for, um, We'll be getting the names of a couple residents um, from one of the other nursing homes who may not have people providing gifts for them whom we are going to adopt, but I don't have those names yet. So that information will be coming shortly. So we'll be collecting the things on this list, and then as I said, we'll be doing something special for our shut-ins this Christmas. Are there any other announcements this morning? All right. Uh, instead of starting with our confession this morning, we're going to start with a lament for all the s saints in a time of pandemic. Please stand. The shroud covers us. 750,000 and more have died in our nation from the COVID-19 pandemic. Five million and more have died worldwide. Have mercy, O oh God. Sickness fills our homes and hospitals. Healthcare workers are weary and exhausted as suffering and death has come so near to them. Have mercy, O oh God. Families and friends grieve. With Mary we cry out, Lord, if you had been here. Over 100,000 children in the United States cry out for parents, grandparents, or caregivers who have died from this pandemic. Have mercy, O oh God. Ways of life are forever changed. The shadow of this disease spreads over the living. Relationships are strained or broken. Depression, anxiety, fear, and grief 
have become constant companions. Have mercy, O oh God. Families and neighbors, leaders and officials mistrust one another. Anger rages, systems break down, doors are closed to understanding and mutual care. Receive, O oh God, the laments of our own hearts. Brothers and sisters, lift up your heads and hear the words of promise. The creator of all brings life from the ashes. The redeemer of the world wipes away our tears. The spirit of life fills us with strength for the days to come. Even as we grieve, we do not grieve as those without hope. We trust that your, all your saints dwell with you forever. So we are bold to proclaim Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing, Shall We Gather at the River? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in the lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. First reading is from Isaiah, the 25th chapter, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, 
the feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said that on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who dwell therein. For the Lord has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord and who may stand in God's holy place? They shall receive blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek you, O Lord, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? Truly the Lord of hosts is the King of glory. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to Jesus, Lord, there is already a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When Jesus had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! The dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord God. 
At this time, I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's lesson. It's time for Colony Kids. Good morning. So today, I'll grab my bench here. Today is All Saints. Yes, you noticed. What do you notice there? He has horns. That's right. What do you think that's about? He's dressed up like what? Like the devil? What do you think that's about? Well, I'm going to teach you a song today. I have to take this off because I need you to be able to hear me. Can you say simul justus et peccator? <laughs> simul justus et peccator. Yeah. <laughs> simul justus et peccator. That's a funny phrase. Simul justus et peccator. Uh, that's a mouthful to say. Simul justus et peccator. I wonder what that means. Simul justus et peccator. We are saint and sinner. Saint and sinner. Simul justus et peccator is a Latin phrase that Martin Luther really liked. And what it meant is that we are simultaneously saints and sinner. Right? So we have Davy here. And we have Devil Davy, right? Because in each of us, there's a good Davy and a bad Davy, right? Or in your case, there's a good Emma and a bad Emma, right? And there's a good Lawson and a bad Lawson. Milam, oh goodness gracious. All right, there's a good Milam and a bad Milam, right? Yes. So, and just like that, there's a good Michelle and there's a bad Michelle. And there's a good Neil and a bad Neil. <laughs> and so what Luther reminds us is that everybody has a good and a bad side, right? But here's the important part. That just as we are sinful, God makes us saints. He makes us holy. Today is the festival of all saints. That's why we've got the color white up today. You'll notice we have the color white hanging everywhere, right? Yeah, there's still green there, but there's white on the pulpits, and there's white on the altar. And that means it's a really important day. And today is All Saints Day, and it's a day when we remember everybody who has ever been saved by Jesus, saved by God. That's kind of cool, isn't it? But that includes us, doesn't it? Because we're saints too, right? So now, does that mean your brother needs to call you Saint Emma? No. <laughs> I'm not sure she, he'd believe it anyway, right? <laughs> I have an older brother, I remember. <laughs> and that's Saint Milam? Yeah? So that's kind of what I wanted to share with you today. That's why I bring out Davy, Saint and Sinner Davy. Saint and Sinner Davy remind us, right, that we have a little devil in us and we have a saint in us, right? And who's going to win at the end of the day? That's right, the saint. God is going to win. So God's going to take away all of our sins. He's going to take away all of that stuff in us that's not good and make it go away and then we'll just be left with the saint, right? But until that day, we have to deal with both saint and sinner, which is simul justus et peccator. So that's a fun word, isn't it? Just a fun phrase to say. It's kind of like supercalifragilistic, right? So you think we can sing that with me? It's, so it's simul justus et peccator. That's a funny phrase. Simul justus et peccator. That's a mouthful to say. 
Simul justus et peccator, I wonder what that means. Simul justus et peccator, we are saint and sinner. You ready? Simul justus et peccator, that's a funny phrase. Simul justus et peccator, that's a mouthful to say. Simul justus et peccator, I wonder what that means. Simul justus et peccator, we are saint and sinner. All right, let's say a prayer and thank Jesus that, that he's going to take away the little devil in us, right? Dear Jesus, we thank you that you love us. And that even though right now we have both saint and sinner in us, one day you will get rid of the sinner side of us and leave just the saint. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for making us holy. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time today to gather before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I got to hold them up? Okay. Oh, people need to see Saint and Sinner Davy. Okay. Well, uh, Saint and Sinner Davy. <laughs> Make sure the folks at home can see Saint and Sinner Davy, right? So. Yeah, the, the pitchfork, he, he's, yeah, he is actually holding a little pitchfork. Build-A-Bear Workshop has lots of interesting things. <laughs> and they happen to fit the puppets. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son. Amen. Anyone here ever watched The West Wing when it came out, or maybe watched it on, on HBO Max? At the end of the second season of The West Wing, which aired in the spring of 2001, Martin Sheen, as President Bartlett, stands before the altar in the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. President Bartlett instructs his Secret Service agents to clear out the church, to lock down the cathedral, leaving the president alone, following the funeral for his beloved assistant and friend, Mrs. Landingham. Mrs. Landingham was not just any administrative assistant. She knew the president when he was in high school when she worked at the private academy that he attended. When he served as the governor of New Hampshire, she was his administrative assistant. Her death was sudden and tragic, the result of a drunk driver on what was to be a momentous day. And so following the funeral, the president stood beside, in front of the altar, in the empty cathedral, and he began to curse. He demanded to know why God allowed a drunk driver to kill her. And it is a beautiful monologue, a beautiful rant, despite the curse words. As a mere man comes before God with his deepest anger and grief. And the scene is so beautiful because it's honest. It's a piece of fiction, and yet it rings true. We've all felt that way, a sudden death of someone whom we loved, or a lingering death of somebody who deserved something much more. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are permitted to come before God not only with our joys and thanksgivings, but we are permitted to come before God with our anger, our grief, and our questions. I think that's why I love this passage from John chapter 11. I love this passage because of the rawness in Martha and Mary's response to Jesus when he finally returns to Bethany. And I say finally, 
because the sisters had sent word to Jesus earlier. They had begged him to return, but Jesus dawdled. Jesus delayed, knowing that Lazarus would die. When Jesus finally arrives in Bethany, Martha, seeing him enter the town, marches out of the house and down the street. Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But Martha's not used to being blunt, so she immediately tempers herself. But even now, Lord, I know that whatever you ask God, he will give you. Jesus engages Mary theologically. Martha, your brother will be raised up. And she replied, I know that he will be raised at the resurrection at the end of time. But Mary doesn't temper herself. Mary doesn't engage in the theological questions. When Jesus comes to her in the house, she is unapologetic in her words. Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Two sisters, two very different responses to grief. I tend to be more like Mary. She's angry. And I'll tell you right now, I'm angry. I'm angry about the death that we see all around us. I'm angry that three quarters of a million people have died in this country from COVID since the beginning of March of 2020. I'm angry about the increase in domestic violence that we have heard and seen since the beginning of the pandemic. I'm angry about the violence, people being shot for the stupidest reasons. A security guard tells somebody walking into a Dollar General, you need to put a mask on, a mask on. You see people getting shot because they were cut off on the highway. One of the pastors in Chapin, recently it was his brother-in-law's brother, so not direct relation to him. His brother-in-law's brother was shot to death at a gas station in a road rage incident in Michigan. He was a beloved firefighter in the community, killed over a road rage incident. I'm angry that our world is so messed up that even when we have vaccines that work, bureaucracy and greed have kept people in poorer countries from getting vaccinated. It's easy to ask the question, Jesus, where are you? Jesus, where were you? If you had been here, this would not have happened. And I believe that that question, where were you, God, is the most frequently asked question when tragedy strikes. We hear a miracle story about a child whose serious cancer suddenly disappears and then wonder why God did not give another child a similar miracle. Think about Graylin Lewis, who, thank God, survived with fairly minor injuries an incident between his car and a train. While Paula Hershaw died from a blood clot a complication from an injury in another car accident of which she was not at fault. Over the last two years, this congregation has experienced too many deaths, and that's probably true everywhere. Any death is too many. But if we think about the last two, two and a half years, we lost Bob's wife, Betty, Nancy Cannon, Jerry Nichols, Pastor Jerry, Alan Nichols, Ann Kirkland, Tony Dominic. Susie lost her mother. Roxanne lost her mother. 
and all these other deaths in the community that we know of. People whom we have prayed for week after week. And I want to say to you this morning that if you're feeling like Mary, feeling like the fictional president that Aaron Sorkin wrote about, then let it out. Raise your fist to heaven and ask, where were you, God? There's biblical precedent for this. In Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 7, the prophet cries out to God while locked in the stocks for preaching the word of God to the people. Jeremiah says, O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed, and I am in derision daily, even every one mocketh me. And I use the King James Version because that comes the closest to getting to the sense of the word. Because the word deceived is mild compared to the word that Jeremiah used in Hebrew. I'll let you use your imaginations as to what word Jeremiah may have used there. But the translators have kept it clean, so to speak. Today is the festival of all saints, a festival of the church where we gather to remember the lives of the people whom we have loved who have died. And I want you to know that whatever you're feeling, that's okay. Angry, sadness, betrayal. Jesus has heard it all before, and Jesus can handle it. Jesus can handle our anger. Notice how Jesus responds to Mary's anger. How Jesus responds to the grief all around him. He doesn't quote scripture. He doesn't tell the people to be faithful. Jesus doesn't tell her that this is a part of God's plan or that the death of Lazarus was the will of God. Instead, Jesus sits with his friends and weeps with them. Jesus weeps with us. Even though Jesus knows that this life is not the end, that beyond this life is the promise of everlasting life, Jesus still weeps with us because he understands. He understands our grief. He understands that we will miss the people whom have already died, who have gone to heaven. Jesus understands that. Today is a day that is set aside to remember all who have died. And whatever you're feeling, whatever emotions are churning in your gut, you can share those with Jesus. Because that's the promise of this passage. That we can bring to Jesus all of our emotions. Jesus knows our sorrows. Jesus understands our anger. And Jesus joins us wherever we are in our grief. We don't have to hide how we're feeling from God. God already knows anyway, right? So why do we try to hide it? Jesus wants to be with us both in times of joy and in times of sorrow. And when we weep, Jesus weeps with us. I want to close with the words from the litany we read this morning. Lift up your heads and hear the words of promise. The creator of all life brings the creator of all brings life from the ashes. The redeemer of the world wipes away our tears. The spirit of life fills us with the strength for the days to come. Even as we grieve, we do not grieve as those without hope. We trust that all your saints dwell with you forever. And so we are bold to proclaim thanks to God. I've asked David to play a little bit this morning before we go into the next hymn. And I invite you at this time to come forward and light a candle in the name of a loved one whom you're remembering. 
This past, Monday, or this past Wednesday, a classmate of mine from seminary was buried. Her name was Jennifer. So this morning, I light this candle in memory of Jennifer and in memory of Pastor Rick Inman, who passed away from COVID in September. Please come forward as you desire.
please stand for our hymn, Blessed Be the Name. In the fourth century, church leaders gathered in the city of Nicaea to define the core beliefs of the Church of Jesus Christ. This confession we say together has been handed down to us from that day. Let us now confess our common faith, joining the saints of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. The kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, it was spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We look for the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and those who are being installed as new council members are invited to come forward. (laughs) 
I've been looking for the mask. It's been attached to me the whole time. Why don't you stand and face the congregation? You're, you're fine here. Just stand behind the, the candles. The following people have been elected to positions of leadership, and we thank them for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we welcomed into the body of Christ, and we were sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and in our mutual mission as a congregation. Carolyn Dowd, Bob Fulmer, Toby Keel, and Judy Rochelle. A reading from 1 Corinthians. These are the variety, there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. There are a variety of services, but the same Lord. There are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us together in the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members in this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful to your specific areas of serving, that the spirit who's em who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith and action in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in the congregation. On behalf of your brothers and sisters in Christ, I ask you, Will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, please respond, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. The assembly is invited to stand. People of God, I ask you, will you support your elected leaders? Will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? I now declare you as installed council members of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and deeds in peace that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Before we continue with the service, I want to take a moment to thank those who have served on council, not just those who are going off council this year, but we had several people who went off council last year and we didn't give them adequate thanks. So I have this book here. And I have to tell you, this guy's kind of funny. This, the person who writes this, he, he takes on a topic, deep dives into it, and then writes a book about it. So this is called Thanks a Thousand. And it documents his journey of thanking every person involved with making his cup of coffee in the morning. And it takes him all over the world. <laughs> so... At this time, I'd like to invite Larry and Barbara Wise to come forward, thanking them. They're going off council, or they're, they just finished completing their terms on council. For Kat Shealy, who finished her term on council last year. I hope that you enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Kat. <laughs> uh, Dan Rochelle, going off council. And Ben Keel, who's not here. Debbie Sheely, who may be outside. If she is, I'll make sure she gets this. To Jennifer Nichols, who went off council last year and Danny Fulmer, who was going off council this year. There you go. This gentleman also has a book called The Year of Living Biblically, in which he tries to live the Bible literally for a year. 
It is absolutely hysterical. At one point, he, he, uh, he, he reads that we're supposed to stone people for adultery, so he's sitting in a park, and the man sitting on the bench next to him says, well, I'm an adulterer. And so he literally takes pebbles and throws them at the guy. <laughs> it's, it's quite an amusing book. I hope you enjoy this. Um, A.J. Jacobs is the author. It helps if I have my red book. It is, uh, we now will continue with the prayers of the church. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes in, the, in this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. Most merciful God, we give thanks for all missionaries who have brought your message of hope to new communities and wiped away tears. Continue to raise up courageous missionaries to share your gospel of hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy. Creating God, we praise you for your abundant harvest and the goodness of creation. Create communities of care for your earth so, all, so that all land, water, and soil will be celebrated and cherished by future generations of saints. Hear us, O God. God of peace, we give you thanks for nations of peace that serve as a refuge for all those all whose homelands are afflicted with violence. Strengthen those who continue to work for peace and support all veterans who carry the scars of war. Hear us, O oh God. <coughs> for veterans of war, as we observe Veterans Day this upcoming week, be with those who suffer from PTSD, especially those who self-medicate with alcohol and drugs. Bring them comfort and peace. Hear us, O oh God. For refugees, especially those who recently arrived from Afghanistan, may they find a warm welcome. Hear us, O oh God. Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for the men and women who have served and defended our country and the values of freedom and justice we hold so dear. Help us be mindful of the sacrifices they made and the hardship endured by their families and friends so that we may never take for granted the privileges that they have secured for us. Hear us, O oh God. God of healing, we give you thanks for health care workers who labor around the clock to answer cries for help. Bring wholeness to all who struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, addiction, and all who long for healing in any way, especially Cheryl Beatenbaum, Gloria Beatenbaum, Tim and Terry Beatenbaum, Kinsley Bauknight, Patsy Chapel, Mike Cooper, Vernon Corley, Dean Coward, Barry Dowd, Bernice Ford, Juanita Fulmer, Shelby Hartle, Melissa Hutchison, Melinda Janeka, Graylin Lewis, Francis Long, Jana Longshore, Tony Marinovich, Joe Morris, Nick Morris, Carolyn Nichols, Dan Rashad, Mark Richardson, Marilyn Schroer, Bernice Sheely, Pat and Steve Wise, Morgan Word, the Congregation of Holy Trinity in Little Mountain, and family of friends of Brett Collins, Martha Derrick, Paula Harshaw, Ann Long, Susan Ward Smith, Ashley Cooper, Chelsea Johnson, for those whom we lift to you aloud and in our hearts, 
Hear us, O oh God. God of justice, we praise you for the feeding ministries and for all meals that bring people together for nourishment and fellowship. Bless chefs, bakers, servers, dishwashers, communion assistants, and meal ministry coordinators. Hear us, O oh God. Almighty God, guide us in your love to do ministry in the world, especially through our prayer partners this week, University Lutheran Church, Clemson, South Carolina, and their pastor, Reverend John Heiliger, and Reverend Joshua Kestner. We also pray for our presiding bishop, Reverend Elizabeth Eaton, and our synodical bishop, Reverend Jenny Eisbacher, and their respective staffs. Be present with our companion centers of Columbia, Japan, and the Southwest Diocese of Tanzania. May they all know that you are present in their ministry to those in need. Hear us, O oh God. God of the ages, we give you thanks for the saints who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us, especially Linda S. Blackburn. Edith Burton, Mel Busby, Brett Collins, Jim Dees, Martha Derrick, Tony Dominic. Rodney Epton, Sammy Frick, Karen Glenn, Paula Harshaw, Mr. Paul Hawkins, Angela Jackson. Rick Inman, Ann Kirkland, Ralph Lewis, Ann Long, Bobby Wilfred Motes, Donnell Minnick. Jewel Smith, Susan Ward Smith, Donna Summer, Merle Summer, Jennifer Schweitzer, Ellie Jane Wise, Ethel. Wipe away our tears and lead us by their example until we feast together on your holy mountain. Hear us, O oh God. God, our protection and strength, we entrust to all for whom you, we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. For this hatred. Let me so love, where there is injury, pardon, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witnesses of your saints, you show the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with Tony, Dominic, Rick Inman, Anne Kirkland, and all the saints, with the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the meal was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Luther taught that the most important words during communion were for you. That the sacrament is given for you as an individual. So this morning, I invite you to share those words with one another. This is the body and blood of Christ given for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. Would you please stand? Jesus Christ, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless you and give you and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth forevermore. Amen. Our final hymn, which my husband noted was ironic, is when the saints go marching in.
announcements before the final blessing. Tomorrow night is the friendship group's Thanksgiving dinner, and there's plenty of space for people to join us. And that be what time does that begin? 6, 6 p.m. tomorrow night. And this afternoon at 3 o'clock in the fellowship hall will be a meeting for parents who are interested in uh, having their children participate in the annual Christmas pageant. Led by the saints before us, go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. A little long today.